These hotel scenes suck. Mark over there is lifting his 15th print. We're just getting started. Looks like the room's been tossed. Nothing in the safe, nothing of value anywhere else. No money. No jewelry. I always carry at least a pair of earrings in my purse. Yeah, like you carry a purse. That's because you carry it for me. Oh. Marks on the neck, huh? Asphyxiation? Yeah, her larynx is crushed. Time of death? Body's in full rigor, approximately 12 to 18 hours ago. Puts it between 4 and 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. Arms are crossed, minor personalization. A burglar rapist with a conscience. Death, probably by strangulation early last night. Reads like a robbery rape homicide. But there's no signs of forced entry. And if she fought back, she didn't do it for long. Frozen fright? A stranger. Am I the only one on the planet that actually uses the people? Oh, good thing it only works one way. You know, the staging bothers me. Arms crossed, post-mortem personalization. That's not a stranger. Remorseful stranger? Seems more like regret than anger. You can't rule out anger. Someone who knew her or someone who didn't. An angry guy, a guy with a guilty conscience. How do we narrow this down? That room had so many fingerprints and DNA samples, it was frightening. Oh, well, that's great. We're doing exclusionary prints and DNA tests on the hotel staff. Tell me about the victim, people. OK, Sylvia Hadley married. Husband's in Baltimore. She and her father-in-law, Dr. Benjamin Hadley, and the wife were attending the National Conference of Christian Colleges. Not the Benjamin Hadley. Mm -hmm. More powerful than Pat Robertson, able to leap a tall Democrat in a single bound, president of Midvale College, which used to be a podunk nothing. Now it's suddenly a think tank for the neoconservative movement. Although, that's an oxymoron. I love you, Olivia. Family values, other euphemisms for smug sanctimony, study the dead white men, freedom from government. Husband's been notified. Uh, he's catching the next flight up. I'll have some plain clothes pick him up. Did you talk to the in-laws? Yeah, they were pretty flipped. We'll need to go back for more questions. All right. Well, be direct, but be discreet. I can smell the politics a mile away. What happened to you renting me a drawer? Gonna need it this summer. It's nice and cool down here. You again. You get a chance to take a quick look at Sylvia Hadley? Confirmed cause of death. Manual strangulation, no cloth-like abrasions, no leather cuts. And what about time of death? Well, I can narrow it down to between 6.30 and 9 last night. DNA? Rickett came up positive for semen. Sheets were positive for bodily fluids as well. It's a good sample. Until next time. Thanks. Do you know anything about where Sylvia went yesterday? Whom she might have met with? Ward's dinner for the Christian Educators Coalition. She was supposed to go, but she said she would just skip the mixer. I assume she was tired from walking, and, uh, you know, this, this is a hard city. Do you uh, want some coffee? No, thank you. Specifically, did she have any meetings? Sylvia was independent. She loved art. And was anxious to go to the Met. Did you see her at the hotel when she returned? Briefly. She seemed tired. She and Brad, they've been burning the midnight oil on the annual report. Brad? Weber, uh, our financial guy. He's staying here as well. We're going to need to talk to him. His firm has a New York office, uh, Mondragon Weber Investments. Anyone have any personal grievance against her? She was a fine young woman. Everyone loved her. She and my son had so much to look forward to. We're just looking for any possible motive. A drug addict or a rapist broke into her room. How about lack of personal responsibility as a motive, or atheistic hedonism? Ben. I knew something like this would happen here. I mean, you read about it all the time. I trust this case is a priority, Detective. Yes, sir, it is. I live in Baltimore, but I'm in New York often enough to need an office. Vice versa for my partner, Jack Mondragon. You met Sylvia Hadley Sunday, correct? Yes, we had a meeting. Thank you. It's supposed to be a report of the trustees today. What'd you do after the meeting? Came to the office, worked late, strode along Fifth Avenue, window shopping, and went back to the hotel. And what time was that? About nine. <laughs> you seem suspicious. This early in the investigation, we're suspicious of everyone. Anyone see you leave the office? No one was here. I, I don't know about the front door. They're usually asleep down there. They this isn't a great building. When you got back to the hotel, uh, what did you do? Went to my room and crashed. I, I was pretty tired. <laughs> Today was supposed to be a big day. We just interviewed uh, Brad Weber. He's the guy who manages the endowment. Totally struck out, though. 
Dorman saw him leave his offices after 6. He picked up his phone messages at the hotel front desk after 9. Phone records checked out. The exclusionary prints and the DNA screens are being processed now. So far, the only staff prints we have in the room are a maids and a room service guy who has an alibi. Security guy told us about a burglar who's hitting the big hotels. <clears throat> they got a robbery task force on it. What, burglaries aren't sex crimes? Hey, Briscoe. Go through this box of security videotapes and check it out like a good man. There's no timestamp, so have fun. OK, the latest victim's name is Lana Hoffman. She's staying at the Sussex on the east side. When I got back to my room, it actually took a while before I realized my safe was cleaned out and all my jewelry was gone. But what really bothered me, the other detectives dismissed as an idiosyncrasy. What was that? The burglar masturbated in my underwear. Now they're sitting in some evidence lockup. Not that I want them back, though. They said he probably picked the room randomly. You notice anything strange prior to the break-in? Mm, like what? Well, the burglar might have followed you, find out what room you're in. No, nobody followed me. Maybe he waited down in the lobby? There was this one guy. Seems like he was always in a lounge reading a newspaper. We rode the elevator up once. He creeped me out back. Yeah? What did he look like? Um, smallish build, wire room glasses. But he always wore the same red baseball cap. Uh, that's why I noticed. I thought some men never grow up. I didn't think of it till now. So we didn't call you. So no one wants to call you ever. You know, you guys are up to your necks of perversity 24-7. And my men don't understand why it is you picked your squad. Well, it's people like you that make our squad necessary. Yeah, well, my people don't want whatever it is you got. You're tainted. Benson. Ten bucks says the only other cops you hang out with are Brooklyn SVU. You lose. Bronx SVU. Yeah. We'll take yeah. these. We'll make you coppers. How's Craigan? What do you want? The victim is pregnant. Hey, what do you know? Double homicide. 